What's up friends, I got a brand new video for you today and looking through the comments on that last video I posted comparing the S23 Ultra portrait mode to a real camera, the main comment I saw was, can you compare the iPhone 14 Pro 48 megapixel RAW to the S23 Ultra's 50 megapixel RAW? So that's what I did. I went out with both phones. I tried to shoot in a few scenarios that would show off the full potential of both cameras. But keep in mind that this is computational RAW and it's not direct RAW off the sensor. And so that's gonna give these phones a massive amount of dynamic range. And I'm using quotes because it's kind of like a fake dynamic range that they bake into a RAW file. And this is gonna give you tons of dynamic range and latitude like you would get from a real camera. But you know, there's a bunch of processing, noise reduction, multiple exposures going on with the computational RAW. But this is game changing for people that are taking mobile photography pretty serious. Those last photos I showed were actually edited and that's because this is the whole reason why you'd want to shoot RAW in the first place. And I'm assuming that most of you know the specs of both of these phones, but basically the iPhone 14 Pro's main camera is 48 megapixels and the Galaxy S23 Ultra's main camera is 200 megapixels, but that bins down to 50 megapixels or 12 megapixels when you shoot in RAW. Oh, and to shoot those higher res RAW files, you need to download Expert RAW for the S23 Ultra. That's gonna unlock a bunch of features and actually full manual controls, which is awesome. And to shoot Pro RAW on the iPhone 14 Pro, you have to go into the camera settings and turn it on. Otherwise, you can't shoot RAW by default. And this is the only way to actually get 48 megapixels out of that main camera. Otherwise, it's gonna be 12 megapixels. Now on the flip side, Samsung actually lets you shoot up to 200 megapixel JPEGs out of that main camera, but only a maximum of 50 megapixels when shooting RAW. So obviously I showed you some edited RAW files and I wanna take a look at them straight out of camera because I know you guys are gonna ask me what they look like straight out of camera. And although some of the scenarios, they seem very different, all this can be changed with editing. They can look almost exactly the same. But I thought it was worth showing because I know a lot of you will wanna see the difference. Some of you might be asking why I didn't include the Google Pixel 7 Pro 
because it also has a 50 megapixel main camera and it also does awesome computational RAW. But the problem is that it's only outputting a 12 megapixel RAW image where these two phones can do 48 and 50 megapixel RAW images. So I felt like it wasn't worth doing that comparison since we're just trying to compare these high res files. And you know, I'd assume that the Pixel 7 Pro has the hardware to push out a 50 megapixel RAW image, but Google has chosen not to do it. So maybe they're gonna put it in the Pixel 8 Pro. As I mentioned in my iPhone 14 Pro low light test video I put out a couple months ago, I said that shooting in Pro Raw in low light actually gave a higher detailed image compared to the mashed potato noise reduction they give you in a JPEG. And I was really impressed with what both of these phones were actually doing in low light, and that was with keeping night mode off on both. Anyway, I want to bring you guys over to Lightroom so I can show you the power of shooting raw on both of these phones and how much we can actually push and pull these in editing. All right, so I got the images loaded into Lightroom here. We're gonna take a look at detail, sharpness, dynamic range, highlight recovery, shadow recovery, just overall how these images are being processed. I left the phones in auto, so it's gonna choose its own shutter speed and ISO. And the cool thing with the S23 Ultra though in Expert RAW is that you can actually manually control all the settings if you want to. I set them both to like negative 0.3 so they weren't overexposing. And I have all the info set up on the top left of each of the images. So we have the S23 Ultra on the left and the iPhone 14 Pro on the right. And let's just take a look at the images. So zooming in here, we have pretty similar detail. I would say they look almost exactly the same. But one thing I found really interesting with this shot is that if we look down the alleyway, do you notice something different here? I do. The iPhone has like more shallow depth of field. As we go down the alleyway, this stuff gets out of focus. This was not a portrait mode shot where the S23 Ultra is like ultra sharp all the way down the alleyway. And it's weird because the person was actually the focus point and they both have the same aperture. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but you can see that the iPhone has a way higher shutter speed and it's not afraid to boost that ISO a little bit. And then when we zoom back out on the image, obviously the iPhone has a little bit more contrast. And again, this is just how these images are being pulled into Lightroom and you could easily fix this on the S23 Ultra and make it look almost exactly the same. Now taking a look at this shot, this was a really interesting comparison. I showed this on Twitter. I showed both images edited side by side and they looked amazing. And yes, you can easily make the S23 Ultra look better than the iPhone or at least as good as the iPhone, but straight out of the camera, it looks horrible. You also notice that the iPhone again, isn't afraid to boost that ISO and bump the shutter speed up to make sure that the image is gonna be nice and crispy. The S23 Ultra is doing a lower ISO with a, also a lower shutter speed as well, which is gonna be a little bit more risky when it comes to movement. And I'm gonna show that in a little bit later where I actually get quite a bit of motion blur in the image. So outside of the S23 Ultra boosting the shadows and making the hair look terrible, I don't know what's going on here, why it's making the hair look like that. It's clearly boosted all the shadows. You can see all the detail in the back door here where on the iPhone it crushed it down a little bit. And if we look at the face here, pretty similar detail. I'd say the S23 Ultra is maybe a tiny bit sharper, but not much. And again, the shallow depth of field. Someone also mentioned this on Twitter when I showed this image, that the wall is like nice and sharp on the S23 Ultra where it's kind of out of focus on the iPhone. And it's kind of weird to see because I took them from the exact same angle. So I don't know why <laughs> the iPhone has shallow depth of field. But if we take a look at this S23 Ultra image here, um, I'm gonna show you how you can quickly edit this and fix this. Clearly the shadows can be lifted even more if you wanted to, but we're gonna crush them because it looked more like this in real life. I'm gonna bring those highlights back down to about there. We can bring our exposure down a bit too. I feel like it was a little spicy. And then we can cool off the white balance because it didn't technically look like that in real life. So we're getting, getting closer here. But then the cool thing is you can throw a preset on top of this. So uh, using my class supports presets, shameless plug, look how awesome that looks like just scrolling over these presets. You can make this image look amazing. And I think I did something, I think I did this preset, but it was a little bit warmer and probably a little bit less contrast. And then a little bit more saturation here. So you can easily edit these images and make them look amazing. It's just weird that straight out of camera, it looked kind of bad. All right, and then coming back to motion blur, one thing I noticed that the S23 Ultra likes to do is keep that shutter speed low. And I had Beck walk across the street. And if you know anything about photography, you'd never take a photo of a person walking at 1 1 20th of a second. Again, these phones are in auto, so it chose this as a shutter speed. And when we zoom in here, you're gonna see it's way blurrier. And that's just because it's getting that motion blur. She was moving and the shutter was too slow. 
and you can see the iPhone is gonna be quite a bit sharper in this situation here because it actually captured that movement with a higher shutter speed. And it's kind of unfortunate if you're gonna take photos of a moving subject while you're trying to shoot raw. Now this was just a straight up shot. I thought this was a good dynamic range test. We've got some sky, we've got some highlights, we've got some shadows. And overall, both of these images look amazing. This is pretty much exactly how it looked. Again, the S23 Ultra is a little bit greener than I would typically choose in a white balance. And if we zoom in here at the detail, they look pretty similar. I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. We can zoom in a little closer here. Yeah, they're, they're looking pretty similar here. Although when we come down to the lower frame, the iPhone is quite a bit sharper on this like bag thing here where it's a little bit more blurry and out of focus on the S23 Ultra, but that could just be optics because we're getting near the bottom of the lens. I'm not sure. Okay, so we took a look at some daylight stuff. Let's take a look at some low light situations here. And again, we're gonna always see the iPhone have a higher ISO with a higher shutter speed. And taking a look at both these images, again, S23 Ultra is a little bit more greener than the iPhone. And we zoom in here when it comes to detail, the iPhone has quite a bit more noise, but it does look sharper. Taking a look at this number here, you can see it a little bit better on the iPhone. Um, overall though, they look pretty similar when we're looking into this window here. I guess the big question is how much dynamic range can we actually pull? So let's take a look at the S23 Ultra first and see if we can bring back some of those highlights in this building here. And I'm going to pull the highlights back. And oh yeah, all that stuff's coming back. That's, that's pretty crazy that you can do that with a phone. So we can actually see what's inside the building. Let's see if the iPhone can do something similar to that. So I'm going to pull the highlights back in the iPhone here. And no, the iPhone does not have any detail in the highlights. It, isn't bringing anything back in here. So the S23 Ultra actually has quite a bit better highlight recovery in these low light situations. So yeah, when we zoom out, you can see the door, you can see all the information on the signs there where the iPhone is just completely blown out. So let's take a look at some shadow recovery now. So if we lift these shadows up, <laughs> okay. So I wouldn't call it superior shadow recovery. I don't know what's going on. This looks like we've got some like cloth over top of the sensor. So that's pretty bad. Um, so I wouldn't push the shadows that much. You're maybe safe around here, which doesn't really give you that much, but that's looking pretty bad. What about the iPhone here? So if we boost the shadows on the iPhone, the iPhone is not doing anything weird, but it's also not lifting the shadows quite as much, but at least the iPhone doesn't have any weird sensor noise. It's more just actual grain in the image. Again, you're never gonna push these images. Like if you want a low light image, you would never pull the shadows up that much. You'd want it to still look like a low light image. So you'd wanna leave it like around here. You could warm it up a bit. Again, we could even throw a preset on it if we wanted to. Something like that looks pretty cool. You can throw a preset on that. It crushes the shadows so you don't see them, but at least you get like a more realistic low light image. So I was just driving around and I saw this cool little milk truck. I don't know what you call this thing, just parked in the street under a light. And the iPhone image looks amazing straight out of camera. I'm not sure what the S23 Ultra is doing here, why it's so orange, but the iPhone shot looks pretty dope. Again, we're looking at 1000 ISO on the iPhone and 1000 ISO on the Samsung this time. So they both chose similar ISOs. The iPhone has slightly higher shutter though, but not by much. But the real question is, what's the detail like when we zoom in? And the iPhone here has a massive advantage on detail, like that's, that's crazy how much sharper that is. I'm going to pull out mashed potatoes again and say that the S23 Ultra looks a little bit like mashed potatoes here. I don't know if the iPhone's doing any over sharpening much, but holy crap, there's a big difference here in detail. But like, look at the details on the bricks on the iPhone. I don't even care about the color at this point. I'm looking at the detail here and that's crazy. You can see the rivets coming down the window here and there's no rivets on the S23 Ultra. Wow. And there's obviously quite a bit more noise in the iPhone shop, but I actually prefer that. And I used to give Apple crap way back when they first launched Pro Raw 
that they were removing too much noise and it was looking more like how the S23 Ultra looks. It was too soft and mashed potato-y and they've clearly tweaked it and now they're allowing a lot more grain and noise to come through which gives you more detail. And this looks more like a real camera and less like some crazy computational mashed potato mess. And this is what I noticed throughout all the lower light images shot with the iPhone versus the S23 Ultra is that the S23 Ultra removed more noise, but that also diminishes the amount of sharpness and detail that you get in those low light images. The shooting experience is quite a bit slower than if you're actually shooting JPEG and you're gonna notice that the time to take the shot is like half a second to a second versus instant and that goes for both phones. And that's because it's doing so much processing, multiple exposures to make these computational RAW files. But I did notice what people were calling shutter lag, I would call more processing time on the S23 Ultra. And I noticed it in a few shots where the iPhone was tack sharp with movement and the S23 Ultra kind of looked a little bit blurry. And that will be a problem if you're taking pictures of faster moving subjects. But that said, it depends on the lighting because in lower light situations, the iPhone is also gonna struggle with this, so neither of them is really immune to this. We also have to remember that the S23 Ultra is 200 megapixels processing down to 50 megapixels using their adaptive pixel grouping, which is kind of like a four to one. And that's gonna make a 50 megapixel image where the iPhone is just straight up 48 megapixels. It's basically pixel to pixel. And in most of these tests, I saw no real perceivable image detail coming from that 200 megapixel sensor. They both looked pretty similar. And in some situations, the iPhone seemed to have more detail. I don't know why, but that's just what I noticed when zooming in. And the RAW files are also bigger on the S23 Ultra. They're around 115 to 125 megabytes per file, where the iPhone 14 Pro is around 60 to 80 megabytes. So if you're a trigger happy photo enthusiast, you're probably gonna wanna rock some cloud storage to offload some of those images to free up space. But that's gonna be it for this video. I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can, even though I am an iPhone user, but I really think that Apple's probably doing the better job with these computational RAW files. And that's just going based off my comparisons and moving the images and pushing and pulling the highlights and shadows. That said, as an overall camera system, I'd say the S23 Ultra is way better. Come on, you got the 200 megapixel JPEGs, you got full manual controls, you got that 10X telephoto, which is clutch when you need it. So if I have to give a winner to anybody, it'd probably be the iPhone 14 Pro if you're shooting RAW, but that's only for this test and shooting these high res raw images. But that's gonna be it for this video. Have fun battling it out in the comments, but be nice to each other. Remember, don't attach your whole identity to a phone manufacturer. They don't care about you. They just want your money. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Kind of gives these phones a massive, 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 blah, 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 that I would be able to blah, 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 blah. Still waiting on that train to pass. And Sony's dropping off my Uber Eats order. Include the Google 7 Pro. Google 7? Google Pixel 7. Some of you might be asking why I didn't include the Google Pixel. <laughs> and also, also, man, I can't speak. As raw files, you need to, I got that side because I know a lot of you, blah, blah, blah. My battery's about to die. See ya. Thank you.